So I just quickly recall what we were doing last time. Uh, we were doing continuous random variables. Uh, so these came about or continuous probabilities. Uh, these came about because of um, how we wanted to assign probabilities to continuous uh, spaces. So the key motivation was uh, let me just define this. So we call it Um, so here we had this S was an uncountable set and uh, uh, F was a, so here in this setup uh, we couldn't assign probabilities like we did a discrete setup. So we had a special definition for events. Uh, these are all subsets, the, the collection of subsets which satisfies the following property. That is if uh, A is an F then A complement is an F. And the, uh, the whole space was in the collection F. And then uh, we had this thing that if A ends uh, were a sequence of events, uh, uh, A ends with an F, uh, this would imply that the union of the collection of A ends is also an F. So this is what we called as uh, our events. Uh, is, and then the probability defined in the same way is a function from F uh, to 0, 1. In the sense that satisfy the two axioms that the probability of S was equal to one, and the second was that uh, if you had a disjoint sequence of events AI, AI in section AJ was equal to MT for I not equal to J, then the probability of the countable union was, uh, was going to be the sum of the properties. And uh, of course, this, this, this is the, the generic definition of what a probability should be. And our motivation was uh, when S was an uncountable set, this is structured to preserve. And this also worked when S was a countable set. There's no problem. So, and then we said that uh, we would define probability in the following way we would take, um, so you would take F to be a, a, a piecewise continuous function in the real and real. Uh, we would take, uh, so we just erase a little bit, we would take f to be non-negative. Uh, then uh, we would have also this integral of f from minus to infinity, f of x dx to be equal to 1. Such functions we would call as uh, probability density functions. And uh, we showed that we had a theorem. We showed that uh, using proper integration, that uh, that if you define P, uh, we had the real line, and we took F to be the uh, the smallest sigma algebra or the smallest event space uh, containing uh, intervals. Uh, we said that uh, the probability of A would be the integral over a f of x dx. And this defined about this was shown this defined about. On the real. So something that uh, we had uh, we had done last So this is where we were and then uh, I had uh, I had motivated why this uh, this sort of setup was necessary, and you also done this in measure theory as well, so you know exactly uh, what the setup is. Very nice. Okay, so now uh, I want to do some examples, uh, which we have uh, we've seen uh, some standard examples. So the first one is uh, so I want to do today. I want to do uh, so I want to do several things. I want to do uh, very quickly today. Uh, today. So I want to do uh, several things. One is uh, I want to do random variables. Uh, and 
then examples of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of density functions. There are user applications. So now uh, here's the here are the key uh, ideas uh, that I'd like to do. So um, the first is a uh, random variable. So this is something that uh, you have seen in your um, major theory class. Uh, you may have seen uh, is that uh, so any measurable function random variable. So something people were asking me quite some time back in the discrete setup. What was a, a random variable? Uh, in terms of uh, idea, so here's a definition. So, this definition so you let uh, S F P sorry, what I mean. you let S F P. Uh, be a probability space and let uh, x be a set from s to r be a function uh, then um, x is a random variable If it's a measurable function, that is provided uh, that whenever b is in whenever b is an event, b is in f, or b is an event in r, b is an event in r, then uh, x inverse of b is also an event in f. This is what I would call as an event, uh, a random event. That is, it takes events to events. This is a pretty fundamental definition that you require. And based on this, uh, you'd have this. Uh, so based on the random variable, you'd have a, for each random variable before we had a distribution. So here, what we would do is we would define it in the following way: in, in the continuous setting, definition uh, five point two point two. So what we would do is we would say that uh, again let S be a probability space. Probability space. Uh, a random variable let X be an R, a random variable. That means it takes events from R to events in S. And then now uh, x is called. So here's a key definition. So before we have only did discrete random variable, but now we'll call x as a continuous random variable. Random variable. If uh, there exists. A density function f sub x from a real line to real line. Of course, a density function is non negative, but, uh, such that uh, for any event A, in R. Uh, in, so I'd say any event A in R. So it's a probability that X is in A is given by the integral of A F sub X of X to X. And in this case, uh, we would call it as uh, the F sub X is called the 
probability density function of x. So you should just think about this in terms of uh, how we did the discrete setting. Uh, so there we had this probability mass function. Here we have the probability density function of x. So x is continuous means it will give it will uh, its probabilities are given by stuff as integral. So one uh, immediate feature of this is the following that uh, is the following simple lemma that we'll try and see. Uh, Immediate is the is the idea that uh, is a lemma. Lemma uh, that uh, let x be a continuous random variable. Then um, for any A in R, uh, probability x equal to A is equal to 0. It's a simple fact that you can sort of show. Uh, so let's see, so let's just try and see if we can show this. It's very easy to show. Let's do a proof. So here we have uh, what is probability x equal to a? You could think of it as uh, probability a less than or equal to x less than a less than or equal to a, and that's the same as the integral from a to a f of x dx, and that's just zero by the property we get. So that's a simple proof. So that means a continuous random variable gives no probabilities to singleton points. And that's kind of the characteristic of a continuous random variable. So, so this let's just uh, quickly sort of uh, just uh, just place a couple of remarks. Right? right. So now, when x was discrete, right? When x was discrete, uh, we had a range of x was countable, right? Was countable. Let's was some let's say x i uh, i being equal to one, and then we had f sub x of x was uh, is probability x equal to x for all x in the range of x. We call this the probability mass function. In the continuous setting, we have we, we don't have a, the range is uncountable. The range of x is a subset of r. And the probability of x is in a set A is given by an integral f of x, x where f is just the uh, probability density function of x. And we note that in this setup, in this continuous setup, when x is continuous, the chance that it gives any point A is zero. So it's something that we should sort of uh, keep in mind when we sort of move on. Uh, of course, this, uh, this you may not find it sort of uh, non-trivial in terms of understanding, but uh, in terms of in terms of probability, it's sort of very useful. In terms of application, it's sort of very useful ideas. So these are interesting ideas. So these are sort of key ideas in probability that we will sort of utilize uh, in terms of examples. So one was that uh, so the idea is that you want to assign probabilities to uncountable sets. Uh, of course, from the theory, you know exactly how to proceed with these things. But um, in terms of uh, 
how to define them in terms of applications, they typically come from uh, density functions. So probability of an, an event A is integral of A of f t x. Then the, the analog of discrete random variables is random variable that takes values in on the real line. And the condition is that they are measurable function. That is, events, uh, any event B in R is given by the inverse of it is an event in S, which was happening. And on the right hand side, uh, we already have this idea that, uh, that so to understand how the random variable distributes probability, we call it a kind of random variable if it's given by this density function. And uh, sorry. And then we also know that uh, if it's given by an integral, then the chance that gives one particular point is probability is zero. So, and then also from measure theory, you should also understand this idea that star tells you that uh, the random variable is absolutely continuous with Lebesgue measure. Okay. So I don't know if you've uh, if you've done absolute continuity in the class. Uh, maybe um, can some of you tell me in chat that if you've seen it in class. Uh, I would have this concept called absolute continuity of measures. Okay, so, so Rahul suggests so that's the idea. So random continuous random variables are are typically uh, if you if you ask sort of a, a card carrying probabilist, they'll sort of uh, go and say, okay, uh, I mean an absolute continuous random variable, but uh, I just call it continuous random variables. And so I won't debate too much about. So let me now go back here. Uh, okay, so now here's the first theorem uh, uh, that I'd like to sort of also play with a little bit uh, on definition towards this. So here's an important definition. So, so to, to understand uh, number for examples, uh, we will need what's called a a concept called distribution function. So, so this kind of uh, the idea, the theme behind this is that this transcends uh, both discrete and continuous worlds. This transcends uh, this is both discrete and continuous worlds. Uh, and the idea is the following. So the idea is the So, uh, so here's definition. Uh, uh, 5.2.4. So let if x is a random variable, so x is a random variable, so it can be either discrete or continuous. Okay, so we have two types of random variables as one concern. Uh, then its distribution function. FF from the real line to zero one is defined by F of X is the chance that probability X is less than equal to X. So, uh, of course, typically uh, <clears throat> the capital F depends on little X. So, uh, we will sometimes uh, when it, when it, we will sometimes notation that f is the same as f sub x uh, to denote its uh, dependency on x. But uh, you notice that this is sort of a universal uh, uh, function that can be defined for any random variable because you have a discrete one or an, or a continuous one. The right hand side is well defined, and the left hand side is sort of a, a quantitative feature. So let's just do a simple exercise now. Um, so let's say this, this is something that I'll, I'll let you sort of figure out that uh, uh, that uh, so if if x was discrete random variable, let me, let me use this, uh, so x was discrete, uh, 
If I know if f f from uh, so if I know the uh, if I know let's say the range of xi right? range of x so is this xi let's say i being equal to one and I know the probability of f I know the, the probability mass function which is x equal to xi probability x equal to xi that is these are the values where uh, where x takes positive probabilities otherwise yeah. Probability of x equal to x is zero outside the range. From this, we can easily compute immediately the chance that uh, that f of x is equal to x. Right? Leave this stuff. That's easy to do because that's just that's just if you just think a little bit, that's just the sum over all uh, i such that x i is less than or equal to x. The chance that x equal to x. Right? The discrete So now it's a simple exercise to go the reverse. If I know f. I can also go back. I can also go back and find my f. So, so f is kind of a characteristic uh, uh, quantity for capital X. So, so if I know capital F, I know density property mass function. If I know if I know the uh, probability mass function, then I know the distribution function. So this is kind of a characteristic property of both uh, capital F and K. These go both ways. This if and only if it's not a correct symbol, but sort of a, a, a connectivity idea. So maybe I should not use if and only if I just say uh, you can go from one to the other and this to the other. So this is it. So it's a simple exercise. Of course, you can observe the exercise easily from this definition. Now, in the continuous setting, it'll be it's a sort of a, a, a nice idea. Right? So now, what is it going to be? So in the continuous setting, so let's say, let's say now let's come back to this x is continuous and right? then uh variable. Then let's so now moment I have a variable, I, I'll always come with this caveat, right? with this sort of uh, so because my continuous variable, the way I define it always come with a density function. Let's say with a piecewise continuous uh, density function. Eh? We are like to infinity. Okay. Then uh, let's go. So let's look at let's look at let's look at the distribution function. Then capital F of X is given by the chance that x is less than equal to x. That's going to be what now? That's going to be minus infinity to x so of f of y dy right, by definition. By definition. Now, now there's sort of a now how do I get a little f from here? If I want to emit the same setting, if I know capital F, then I know that. So this is where I think, I don't know if you've seen this hard theorem in, in the proof of this. So if you look at the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, then uh, you know that uh, f prime of x is little f. Right? And f is differentiable and f prime of f. Of course, this equality is uh, not for every x, but of course here, uh, my f is piecewise continuous, so this is always true. So, okay. so I should not say for every x, I guess uh, this, is, uh, this is for all, the, for every x has that f is continuous at x. So now this is a sort of a, uh, a key theorem that you have in mind. Right? This is something that you can show. So if I know the distribution function, I differentiate the damn thing, I get a little f. And vice versa, if I know little f, I know distribution function. So, no problem. so this is, in some sense, even in the discrete setting, uh, even the continuous setting, it follows that the, the distribution function is an identifiable quantity for the law of x. So this this uh, this notion of uh, going from uh, so let me just write this down. Uh, so in in, in terms of red maybe uh, or a blue spine. So uh, a random variable x so 
So we have two qualities. Uh, if x is discrete, we have a probability mass function or probability, probability density function. But if you, if you transcend the discrete and the continuous world, uh, a one uniform quantity that identifies both of them is this f of x, capital F, the distribution function. So if you know distribution function, then you can go both ways. Right? You can go to uh, density function, uh, or you can go to probability mass function, and that tells you everything on that number. So in some sense, uh, the uh, the capital F is so maybe I should just uh, again remind ourselves that this, this may depend on x. So the capital X is something that uh, capital F kind of understands x completely, and if you know x, you can also get f of x. So now let me do some examples. Uh, so here, uh, uh, here x is uniform a b, right? So let's see. So. So now we already seen this example, one example is seen. So now uh, if I have an interval a, b, uh, interval a, b, so you, you can think of it as a close or open. Let me take it an open interval, so that makes uh, the technicality a little bit easier. So interval a, b, let's say that's my set S. Then I, I take, uh, uh, I'll say x, random variable x is uniform a, b. If, if, If the probability density function of x is given by probability of uh, I mean, density function, so that means you know, density function f sub x of x is equal to uh, 1 over b minus a when a is less than x less than b and 0 otherwise. So uh, this is what I'll call as a uniform random variable. So this is consistent with our example before that uh, you know if you notice that uh, just notice simple exercise that uh, the probability of x let's say is an interval c comma d right and let's say a is less than c is less than d is less than b then we know the same as the integral from c to d f sub x of x dx. And that's going to be the same as, let's say, uh, C minus D divided by uh, B minus A. Yeah. So in some sense, uh, uh, the chance that X is an interval is proportional to the length of the interval. Right? So proportional to the length. So this simulates the idea that uh, uh, you can pick a random a point uh, uniformly in the interval. We had seen uniform 0, 1 before. So one, uh, like I have sort of made a made a sort of a, an important point that the distribution function characterizes the random variable completely. So let's compute it. So now here f sub x of x is given by the chance that x is less than or equal to x. Right? And that's what that's going to be equal to the integral from a to b. So integral from so minus infinity to x, uh, f sub x of y dy, right, that's the definition. Now, this again, you know, just be a little careful. So now, if first thing is you'll notice that if x is uh, x is less than a, then f sub x is zero, right? F sub x of y is uh, is zero uh, for all y less than or equal to x. So this would imply that uh, f sub x of x is, is equal to b. That's one thing you, you need to get. Uh, that's a simple thing. If uh, x is bigger than b, then uh, then uh, you notice that f sub x of x is equal to minus infinity to x, uh, f sub x of y dy, 
and that will just be from A to B because X is above B and that's F of X of Y B Y and that's just going to be equal to Y. Then for, for things between A and B, so you have between A and B, you have to sort of work a little bit. So less than or equal to A, let's say, and then B or equal to B. Between A and B, you just work a little bit. So you know that F sub X of X is minus infinity to X, uh, F sub X of Y, B, Y, and that's just A to X, F sub X of Y, B, Y, and that's the same as uh, uh, X minus A by B minus A. That's the same, I mean, right? So A to X of 1 over B minus A, B, Y, and that's the same. So that's the distribution function of, that, right, of X. So it's zero until a. So the so then you can just do two graphs. So one is the density function of f is just uh it's just going to be let me go to my room. Uh, so it's going to be let's say a was here and b was here and one was here, one over b minus a was here. So your density function is just uh, going to be just one here and zero everywhere else, right? Zero everywhere. So that's how your f is going to look like. And your distribution function, right? What does it do? It starts at, it starts, let's say capital F is here. So it starts at, uh, so let's say again A is here and B is here. I took positive, this will take an argument. This function is going to be zero till here. It comes all the way to here. At this point, it sort of climbs up to towards B in linear fashion. And goes this way. That's how it's going. X here. So, uh, so this density and distribution function looks like this for a uniform value. Let me just add a little bit. Sorry, what's going on? It's not strong. This is one example of uniform. So let's do the next one. Uh, this is an interesting example. Uh, this also comes from application in some sense. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Here's an example. Uh, so now uh, here the it's uh, it comes from this uh, idea of uh, idea of this, uh, I don't know if you've seen this in remember your twelfth class ideas or maybe even BSc physics ideas. Uh, the radioactive isotopes. Uh, so these are materials that decay into a stable form. Right? So these decay, uh, these decay uh, to a stable form. So they emit some radioactive particles and then they come to a stable form. So now, if we know that n of t, n of t is the uh, is the is the amount. Let's say I, I don't want to say atoms or whatever. Is the amount of radioactive material. Material uh, uh, that has not decayed. That has not decayed. By time t, uh, then uh, then we know that n of t uh, divided by n of zero. Uh, there is the so n of t, I'll use a different notation here. Let me just go back and correct it. Let's say n of t is here. The standard thing is the n of t by n of t is like is like e to the minus lambda times t. Right? But lambda was uh, for some positive number. So and then uh, uh, 
this is uh, how one understands the fact that uh, our radioactive material decays. So suppose, uh, of course, this doesn't happen in a deterministic fashion. This is happening on, on an average. Right? So suppose I, I do the following. I have x, uh, let's say, represents. Uh, suppose I want to model this probabilistically. Suppose I want to model this probabilistically. Then what do I do? I have to do this. I say I would say L at X represent the time. Uh, so taken. By a randomly chosen particle, randomly chosen so let's let's call it as a, a radioactive atom, let's say for example. For example. To decay. So we'll take that, right? Uh, to its stable form. Suppose they take X to be that. So now, and we wanted to model the top guy, right? So one model there. So then, if you think a little bit, what should X satisfy? So you know that the total number of particles on an average should be e to the minus lambda t, right? So in terms of the initial uh, number of particles, so it's n of t should be n zero times e to the minus lambda. So in some sense, uh, what you do is you want every particle on its probability to decay above t. It should be decayed by time t. Should happen. Dk about time t should have been e to the minus lambda. So this is something that you can think about. So this is this will let's say it needs to satisfy. Convince yourself that that this has to happen. We'll make this regress towards the end. But formally speaking, that you want every particle to have decayed by time t to have less than exponential charge. Then the mean total number of particles will have n t by n zero will have e to the minus lambda. Now. Can I do this? So this this I need for all t particles. Right? So can we do this? The question is, can can we do this? Can we have such an x? And the answer is yes. Uh, the answer is called an exponential lambda variable. So we say capital X is exponential lambda. Exponential lambda. If x has a has a PDF. Given by f sub x of x is equal to. So the idea is that you have lambda e to the minus lambda x if x is non-negative, and zero otherwise. And we say x is a uh, uh, we say x is exponential random variable. With parameter lambda. Right. So now, of course, now uh, this the several things to verify. Uh, one is that uh, one has to verify that f sub x is indeed a probability function. That's the problem. And uh, you can you can you can do many many more things. You can say many more things. You can say that you can actually verify the chance that x is less than equal to x, that distribution function, right? So that's f sub x. Let's say f sub x of x. Distribution function is what is going to be. If you just do a calculation, is going to be zero if x is less than zero. Density is zero, and otherwise it's like one minus e to the minus lambda. So you have to integrate and check. This is the answer. So from this, uh, you immediately get the get the feeling that what would we, we want? We wanted the chance that x is bigger than t, right? So the chance that x is bigger than t is one minus f sub x of t, which is going to be e to the minus one. So let me just go back and scale it down so you can see the whole slide. Uh, over time. So that's so sorry for that. 
So that's the that's one way of understanding that another way. That if, if x was exponential, that uh, another variable, then it satisfies the model that we want that the chance that x is bigger than t is of the form t. 